fingerling transport. Our fingerlings are usually transported by plastic bags filled with water and pure oxygen, depending on their size. The other way to transport live fingerlings will be in tanks that are aerated. If the fingerlings are small and the amount is not too high, then it is easier and cheaper to transport in plastic bags. If the customer wants a large amount of fish or the size of the fingerlings is too big, then it is easier to transport in large aerated tanks. Depending on the amount and size of fish in the bag, fish can be transferred for up to 12 hours. At Smiling Gecko, we approximately have 2.5 to 3 kilograms of fish with 18 liters of water in one bag. When transporting, do not keep the fish in a hot environment. Transport them insulated if possible, under shade, and when working, work fast and controlled. Once the fish are at the pond, put the closed bags in the water for around 30 minutes. When the 30 minutes are up, open the bag and very slowly add some of the pond water into the bag. Once the mix is around 50-50, slowly open the bag in the water, let the fish swim out by themselves. This slow process is important because fish live in the water, so it takes some time for them to get used to their new environment. For example, if you have a pond that has around 400 square meters of area and use around five fish per square meter, which is about the average, then you'll require around 2,000 fish. But when purchasing from a hatchery, it is recommended to increase 10% to compensate for mortality during transportation. This means you should prepare to buy around 2,200 fish. The cost, which can be quite variable, in this example, it will be around $0.02 per fingerling, which is $0.02. Cents. This will amount to $44, excluding transportation costs, that you'll have to pay for seed. Breeding your fish. Understanding how your fish are acting is key to having a successful aquaculture business. One part of this is knowing the water quality of your pond. A more important part is being able to understand what the actions and reactions of your fish mean towards their health and well-being. Happy fish will be active and quite hungry, especially tilapia will often come to the surface and want food. This is a good sign. However, it is very important to take notice when your fish are not active, if your fish are not hungry or not coming to the surface for feed. This can mean you have fed your fish and they are not hungry, but if you haven't fed them and they are not active, that could mean that something is wrong with them. Do not panic. There could be many reasons for this. The nitrogen levels could have become too high in the pond and are now toxic for the fish. The fish are infected by disease or parasites, or most likely the oxygen levels are too low. The first thing to do if your fish are acting strange is reduce the feed. Reducing the feed reduces the amount of oxygen the fish use and also reduces their stress. If their appetite has not returned after one day or two days, then there might be further water quality issues. The clearest message the fish can be sending you is if they do not have enough oxygen. The fish will start gulping for air at the surface of the water. If this continues for more than a few hours after the sun has come up, then you'll need to act fast. You'll need to generate additional water movement to increase the dissolved oxygen in your pond. This can be done with a pump, and your pond water or by adding new water to the pond or exchanging the water as in pumping some out and adding new water at the same time. The more it splashes the better. This is because that more oxygen can be dissolved in the water when its surface area is higher compared to when it would not be splashed around. It should be noted that if you're circulating the water with the pump, the pump should not be at the bottom of the pond because it'll take the sludge from the bottom of the pond and bring it to the surface, which will further increase the oxygen depletion in the pond. However, if you're exchanging the water, then it is recommended to pump the water from the bottom of the pond out, as this is the most nutrient rich and often causing the low oxygen in the pond. Predators, parasites and diseases. Predators can be a risk for your fish when they are still young, especially if your pond is not deep or you live close to an open water source. The two main culprits are predatory birds, 
like egrets, herons or cormorants, and predatory fish, like snakehead fish or catfish. If birds are an issue, cover the pond with a net or use wires and reflectors to deter them. If fish are an issue, keep your fish in an enclosure until they are large enough. Parasites and diseases are dangerous for fish. They can spread fast and destroy all of your fish in no time. There are various diseases and parasites that can affect your fish. Streptococcus is a very important bacterial infection that can endanger your tilapia. If your fish are stressed by low oxygen, high water temperature and bad water quality, an outbreak will be more likely to severely impact your fish. The main parasite to watch out for is Trichodina. This is a parasite that lives on the skin and gills of tilapia. This parasite is usually dangerous for juvenile fish, but if your fish are stressed, the parasite can also be a problem for older tilapia. Sick fingerlings are usually the number one cause of diseases in a clean pond. Make sure you know where your fingerlings come from and that the fingerling nursery disinfects the fingerlings before selling. At Smiling Gecko, we treat the fingerlings with formalin. harvesting. There are multiple ways to get your fish out of your pond. The two easiest ways will be either a cast net or a seine net. A cast net is a large circular net with a diameter of up to a couple of meters with weights at the end and a rope attached in the middle. The net can be cast in a circular motion so it will spread out over a large area. The weights will sink to the bottom of the pond and you can pull your fish out. This is a good solution if your budget is small and you only ever want to harvest a couple of kilograms per time, or if you are alone. Getting a large harvest with a cast net is time consuming and physically demanding. Another way to remove the fish is a seine net. A seine net is a large net with weights on one side and ropes connected on each side at the top and bottom of the net. The net is dragged through the pond and then pulled out. Be careful here that you do not go too fast the seine net is a good idea if you want to harvest a large amount of fish per time and if you have multiple people to help you. A minimum of two people are needed, but more would be better. Furthermore, be aware that you possibly have an SOS in your pond, so you'll need to go underneath it or move it out the way. If your water security is given and there are many easy ways to refill your pond, then complete harvest can be a viable option. Using a pump you can remove most of the water. Make sure to pump from the bottom to remove the nutrient-rich sludge first. This is great for your crops. Once the pond is almost empty, use a seine net to remove all the fish. This method is especially useful if you have a customer willing to purchase in bulk or if you have monosex fish that grow uniformly. After finishing the pond, you can restart with a new cycle. When to harvest your fish is an incredibly open question. It depends on you and your customers. If small fish are required, then harvest the fish when they're smaller, around 150 to 250 grams per head. These are ideal for deep frying whole. If medium sized fish are what you and your customers want, then harvest them from 250 to 350 grams per head. This is a nice size for grilling for the whole fish in soup. Also here, one fish is a perfect portion for one person. If your customer wants large fish, this will be from 400 grams upwards. If you are partially harvesting the larger fish, be careful to work swiftly so the smaller fish that aren't selected can be returned to the pond with as little stress as possible. The time of the day depends on you and your wishes. Here in Cambodia, it can get ridiculously hot during the afternoon. So it is ideal to work with the fish in the morning when it's not too hot for you or the fish. If you know when you're going to harvest, then it is recommended to not feed your fish for one or two days before the harvest. This is because the fish will be stressed when you harvest them. And if they have bellies full of feed, they are digesting it and will, even, and will be even more stressful for the fish. So the chance of having fish die after harvesting especially the ones that you do not select, is higher. Furthermore, if you plan on transporting the fish live to the market, if the fish have a full belly, the chance of fish dying on the way is higher. 
Additionally, the taste of the fish will improve if it has had one or two days with no additional feed before you harvest and cook it. Fish are living animals that also feel pain and stress. To reduce the amount of stress and pain a fish endures, we recommend to kill the fish as fast as possible. There are multiple ways to do this. However, for small-scale farmers, the most practical solution will be stunning the fish with a blow to the head and cutting the main artery in the gills to ensure a swift death. Leaving the fish alive before selling is common practice in Cambodia, where people prefer to buy live fish at the market. If you want to do this, we recommend making sure you have enough clean water for the fish and aeration to ensure the fish do not suffocate. Once the customer wants it killed, a swift blow to the head with a piece of wood or metal is enough to stun the fish and use a sharp knife or scissors to insert into the gills to cut the main blood vessels to stop the blood flow to the brain of the fish. It is important to work fast and controlled when you're harvesting or moving the fish. The more you interact manually with the fish, the more stressed they will be, especially when you con collect your fish in a confined space before harvesting you'll need to work very fast as the oxygen will be de depleted very fast and the fish will be stressed furthermore when you are transporting your fish live make sure that your transport vessels are always aerated because in confined spaces the oxygen will be depleted quickly fish processing and marketing ideally you will know what the end goal of your production will be this is quite an important step. If you already know what you want to produce, it'll be easier to plan your production cycle. A big mistake many farmers make is not finding customers or a customer base early enough. Knowing who your customers will be and what style of product they want is almost as important as the product itself. Because if you do not have any customers, you will not sell fish. There are many ways to do this. Ideally, before you even start producing your own fish, go to the market and see what is being sold and what the average prices are. Contact other people, like your neighbors or people in your village, to see what kind of fish they would like to buy and what they would generally pay for the fish. Sometimes the ideal product may be processed fish. Processing fish can have many advantages. It can get a higher price at the market and the labor will stay within the family. Furthermore, Processing can also be done to extend the shelf life of your product so it is possible to stabilize the selling period of your fish. In Cambodia, there are various ways that fish are processed. The most common practices for fish preservation in Cambodia are either drying, smoking or fermentation. If you have the infrastructure, you can prepare and cook the fish to sell as, complete, as a complete meal. This can be sold at a higher price. Furthermore, if you are near a factory or a busy road, convenience food is very popular in these areas. This can be grilled, fried or cooked fish. It is important to note that processing the fish will result in weight losses. If the fish are, is smoked or dried, it will lose a lot of water, so the weight of the final product will be reduced. So, if you sell a kilogram of dried fish, you'll need to plan to use almost five times more fresh fish. This should also go into your final price calculation. Some customers might want a fish fillet. This also has considerable losses. Usually with tilapia, you'll have 30 to 50% yield when you fillet the fish. So if you have a 500 gram fish, the fillet yield will be between 150 and 250 grams. When you are processing the fish, it is important to focus on a clean working conditions and that you clean the fish properly. Furthermore, if you are not preserving the fish by drying, frying or fermentation, you will need to make sure the fish is cooled with ice so the product can stay fresh longer. Fish documentation. Documentation is an important part in any business. This is not any different in the case of aquaculture ponds. In the description below, there are templates to document the production of your fish. Generally, you need to record the following things. How much fish feed you fed. How much fish you harvested. How many fish have died. And data on how much fish you have in your pond in total. From this, you can make an assumption on how many fish you will have in your pond. And thus, you can assess how much you need to feed and when your fish will be ready for harvesting. 
the record of dead fish shows you how healthy your pond is. And if you're losing more and more each day, it'll hint that something is wrong. Knowing how many fish are in a pond is important because you can assess the density and thus improve your feeding strategy. And lastly, after finishing a cycle or being in operation, all these numbers help you understand whether and how much profit you can make running your business. And after all, making profit or at least no loss is very important for the longevity of your business. New fish are usually the number one source of disease in a clean pond. Make sure you know where your fish are coming from and that they are healthy. When putting new fish into the pond, take it slow. Let the fish acclimatize in the transport bags, then release them slowly. Observing your fish is very important. If the fish are not hungry, reduce the feed. If the fish are stressed, reduce the feed. If the fish are gulping, reduce the feed. When the fish are more active, increase the feed. The size of fish that you want to produce depends on you and the wishes of your customers. Removing the fish is easiest with cast nets and seine nets. Cast nets are thrown and are ideal for smaller harvests. Seine nets are pulled and are ideal for larger harvests. Stop feeding one to two days before harvesting. This will reduce stress for the fish. Human contact is stressful for fish. Whenever you interact with your fish, be it killing or transporting, try to work as fast as possible.